love you, babe, so bad, so bad. Yeah, my heart hurts so good. I love you, babe, so bad, so bad. Hey everyone, happy Monday. Welcome back to Morning Coffee with Rick Alexander. Hope you guys are still digging this intro music. I'm not sure if you guys follow Brittany Taylor, but along with having an amazing voice, she also does nutrition coaching and she also does photography and she's a super inspiring person to follow. And I've gotten to know Brittany over the last month or so or a couple months and she is a super inspiring human to know as well. So you guys should follow her at Barbell Brittany and Again, you can follow me at Rick Alexander underscore and at Lionheart Radio. Today, what I wanted to do is I wanted to talk to you about the human mind, specifically in the context of what it's done to get us where we are today and how we might be able to leverage that in order to go forward into the world and do all the great things that we want to do with our lives. And so what's interesting is uh, over the course of evolution, our mind has gathered all kinds of biological baggage because it's been concerned with our survival as a species. Now, it was born and bred of the wild, but somewhere over the course of millions of years, it gained the ability to look back on itself. And with that essentially came the development of consciousness. And so when you look at consciousness, what that is, it's, it's essentially the thing that makes us sentient. We can look at our lives and with that awareness comes the knowledge that our lives are finite and so we actually have the ability to set assess our own mortality and we're the only animals that have the ability to do that right like a dog it might know it's dying but it cannot look back at its life and judge its own character as far as we know and so the human mind has the ability to look back on itself right now as the human mind has gained consciousness the other thing that it has done simultaneously is gain the ability to pave the wild and That's essentially what the human experience is. See, we were born and bred of the wild, and as we kind of kicked and clawed our way out of the food chain, the way we did that is we were able to pave the wild. Think about a campsite, right? A campsite is essentially an area that exists within the wild, and what we've done is we've mapped out the four corners, so we've kind of gone from one place to one place to the next place to the next place, and we've determined that everything is relatively safe within that area, and so we can set up camp. And if you think about that in the context of what a city is, that is exactly what a city is, except uh, to a much more developed level, right? So a campsite and a city are essentially the same thing. It's our ability to pave the wild and to make our way, to make a safe space for us to exist and for us to focus on higher things like self-actualization. Now, what's interesting is a lot of people think that what humans have done is tame the wild, right? That we are completely separate from the wild. And that actually is just not true. And the reason that that distinction is important to know is because uh, if you think about how we've paved the wild, then you can think about how you can leverage that going forward. And I'm going to get into that for a minute. But if you think what we've done is actually tame the wild and that we exist separate from it, then just wait until you're in your room and then put a wild animal in your house, like a mouse that runs across the floor, and you instantly realize that all we're doing is existing within the wild, hoping to keep a safe space carved out. Now, the reason that's important is because as you look at your hobbies and your passions and the things that you want to do in the world, your mind has the ability to pave the wild. And so if we think about the wild, we can think about it in the context that it is everything that threatens to, it threatens your safety, right? It threatens to take away your ability to exist in a safe environment. And so when you think about the thing that you are scared to do, you should think about it in the context that there's uh, this sort of wild element that you don't yet understand. But what you can do is you can take what humans have always done and you can start to take your thing, your little area, and then you can map your way around it. And what you do is you slowly expand until your campsite becomes an empire, becomes a city. The way that you do that is you take something at the very basic level for what it is, your hobby, your passion, your sport, your, uh, it doesn't even matter what it is that you want to do in the world. And then you find a safe area around it, right? And you kind of just try to grow it organically. You don't just step off into the wild. Then you find yourself completely away from the campsite, completely you know, in chaos, and then you don't have the ability to sort of contend with it. What the human mind has the ability to do is mark out a safe place and then carve its way out from there. And you know this, kids have been doing this forever, for years. So what a kid does is if you ever see a kid in a store who is kind of holding onto its parents' legs, and then uh, as strangers come through or it meets a stranger, it'll sort of play peekaboo from behind the legs. What it's doing there is their parents are a safe space, and 
they what they're doing is they are slowly trying to feel out what they don't yet know, what isn't safe. And so they do that in a sort of cute way where they pop their head out and then they go back in. What they're doing in essence is mapping out an area around their safe space and they're doing so in a, in a manner that is consistent with how humans interact with each other, right? And so what they're doing is they're slowly expanding their safe space until they can realize that, okay, that other human is actually safe, not going to hurt me, and I can come out from this safe space. And now I have between me and between them. And they're just slowly going to continue to map that out. And you know, that's one of the critiques with helicopter parents and that's one of the problems where when you have a parent who is completely always trying to control their kid's environment and control and control the things that they do and the outcomes the problem with that is is that's not how humans evolved what we evolved to do is actually map our way out of the wild and so when you have a kid like the critique of a helicopter parent is that actually what it, the proper role of a parent is to actually push them out and to say, no, no, you're okay. I'm a safe place. You can come back here. But what you need to do is go contend with what you don't yet understand. And you have to go into the wild and you have to figure it out. And then you can come back to my leg whenever you need to. Right. And so you should do the same thing with the things that you know, the things that you want to do in the world. You find them. And then what you do is you slowly map out your space around them until it's safe and you can expand. And eventually your campsite will become an empire. And that's how you go and you do great things in this world. And so this is a you know somewhat complex topic. I'm sort of just still getting my mind around this idea that uh, humans sort of exist within the wild, but I think that there's a lot of things we can learn when we look back at how the hell we've gotten to where we've gotten, and then we can take that knowledge and we can get to where we want to go. I hope you guys have a great Monday, a great week. I'll talk to you tomorrow on Morning Coffee. All right. Yeah.